Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again. And there's been a major hack in the JavaScript libraries that a lot of developers use in their open source code. And a lot of this code is used in open source cryptocurrency wallets. There's a lot of confusion out there because a lot of us are not JavaScript programmers and we don't really understand what this is all about and why it should matter to us. And there has been some information out there that this is some sort of ledger hack. This is not a ledger hack. This would affect ledger users if they're using DeFi and using wallets like MetaMask or DeFi sites like Uniswap or OneInch, among others. So I want to explain to you exactly what it entails and how you can keep yourself safe from this if, in fact, you do use a ledger device and you're doing DeFi. There's been a major hack in JavaScript libraries all over the world called the NPM supply chain attack. NPM stands for Node Package Manager. So this malware could affect cryptocurrency transactions if you're using DeFi or a lot of open source wallets out there. A reputable developer's account uh, called QIX was affected. So apparently there was some sort of phishing attack with someone related to this developer and the phishing email looked very official. It was alerting developers to update their two-factor authentication. And when they clicked on this email, uh, they were infected with this malware and eventually this malware made its way into the JavaScript packages. Unfortunately, these packages were buried deep within the code. Once these utilities were affected, they quickly propagated themselves into all kinds of software and uh, got downloaded by millions of people. Now, the affected utilities were Chalk, Strip, ANSI, and Color Convert. They were deep in the dependency tree, so millions of other developers pulled down these updates without realizing that this was now malicious software. What this software does is intercept crypto transactions and changes the address. So if you're doing swaps or transfers, it basically intercepts the messages that are sent to your wallet, your eyes, what you see on the screen, and they, in, and they substitute the attacker's address for your address. So if you're using a hot wallet, if you're not using a hardware device, there's no way for you to actually see what happened under the hood because what you receive on your screen is the malicious content. And so you approve a transaction thinking that it's legitimate. And in fact, it's stealing your crypto. Now, the solution to this is a hardware device. Now, why this is important is because it doesn't matter what gets sent to the screen of the wallet that you're using, like MetaMask. Um, when you approve a transaction on a hardware device, it will show you exactly what you are approving, the destination, the, the origin, the destination, uh, the fees, all of that stuff is shown directly on the screen. Um, because there's no way that an attacker can substitute uh, what's going on on the hardware wallet. The hardware wallet um, is unaffected by, these, by this hack. But you do have to be careful. If you're not paying attention to what you're seeing on your hardware screen, you could easily approve a malicious transaction. In fact, these hackers are pretty smart because they've substituted an address that looks very similar to the original address. So most people, including me, I, I, I have to admit, I have done this before. Um, when I'm verifying an address, I look at the first few characters and the last few characters, and then I'm satisfied. Well, these attackers uh, know about this. They know that people don't really check every single character in an address. So the address that they substitute may look very similar to yours at the front and the end. You want to make sure that when you approve a transaction, 
that you check every single character of the address to verify it before you authorize on your hardware device. Now, ledger devices have a new feature called clear signing, which gives you human readable format when you approve transactions. It's a little difficult to read on the Ledger Nano S Plus and the Ledger Nano X uh, because they're, the screen is so small and then they can't show you the entire address on that small screen, so they show it to you in chunks. It's doable, but a little inconvenient. It's much easier if you've got a Ledger Stacks or a Ledger Flex where you, can, you are presented with the entire address right on the screen. There's plenty of room to show the entire address and you can verify it before you flip over to the sign screen where you actually sign the transaction. I should also note that clear signing is not available on the Ledger Nano S, the older device. Um, there's been a lot of controversy lately because the Ledger Nano S is being phased out. I hear a lot of people say that they're just fine using their old Ledger Nano S and they don't need all these fancy new security features. Well, uh, this hack is a perfect example of why you should be using an updated device that has all of the new security features like clear signing and transaction check. So Ledger CTO Charles Guillaume uh, posted on X explaining this hack. I'm going to leave a link to that so you can check out what he posted. But here's the breakdown. If you use a hardware wallet, you are safe from this hack. If you are verifying your transactions, you want to stick to clear signing. Avoid blind signing. And if you're not using a hardware wallet, you might want to pause your on-chain activity uh, for a week or so until they've had time to update all these libraries. And if you're using a hardware wallet and you're at that point of approval on your screen and you see that your address does not match, you can always reject the transaction. Nothing is going to go through until you have taken that final step of signing the transaction. So you always have the option of rejecting the transaction, even on your device. So the, that final step on your device can be either signed or rejected. And once it gets rejected, the whole transaction is canceled and you don't have to worry about anything. Also, if you're just holding crypto, uh, there's nothing to be afraid of. Um, just don't interact with DeFi. So even if you've got a hot wallet, doesn't mean that hackers can just reach in there and steal your crypto out. This hack affects people that are actually doing DeFi transactions. So if you're a long-term holder, then uh, simply avoid doing any DeFi right now. The same goes for ledger holders. Um, if you're worried, uh, then don't do DeFi. Th this hack does not affect crypto wallets that are just sitting there right? Um, it only affects people using uh, DeFi and JavaScript. So if you have any questions about anything I said, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered.